Hi and welcome, my name is Wendy from Woos Creations. I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. Um, this is my first video. Um, I would like to show you um, a few products today and also I will demonstrate a couple of cards. Um, I'll show you a few I've made already. So these ones are from the Forever Fern suite. So we have um, lots of different styles, um, basically f layering um, different pieces. This one was made from scrap pieces. Um, I'll show you one of those today. Then we have some slimline ones, which is an accordion fold. Um, I haven't put the sentiments inside because I don't know who they're going to be going to or given to yet. And then this one was a challenge that we made. We had to use just scraps. So this is just the scrap pieces put together. I'm, I really like that one. And this one is quite a simple one, but all it is, is you cut, um, this is one piece of paper, but I'll show you the, the design paper in a second, but it's double sided. So I've literally cut one piece, cut it into six even pieces. And, I, and then I embossed two middle pieces. I don't know if you can see the print on them. I'm sure you can. And then I put, popped those through my um, embossing, my big shot, um, stamping up do-do um, a machine themselves, a mini and a big. Um, they're on my wish list. <laughs> um, and then all you do is you cut six pieces, even size, and then you just flip over opposite sides and glue down. And then I've, I've put sentiment across the middle and it's a nice simple quick card to make so you can make lots of those at the same time and then this one is um, I've put a, a, a full sheet on then a strip of white and then a sentiment and then added a few greenery pieces and a couple of flowers that's the same as the other one and then this one is using scrap pieces so all these strips down here at the back are all pieces I had trimmed off so I always keep all my scraps and then um, I used the um, blender pen to tap I don't know if you can see all the little texture in the very background and then I put a strip across again which was also a piece of scrap so it is slightly wonky but it looks good um, and then I've put a sentiment on with a few flowers and greenery it's pretty much the you know you've just got to build up what you're making so let's have a look at the stamp set. So this is the stamp set that we use. This is Forever Fern and we have lots of um, different ferns. It's a distinctive stamp set which means it has more detail. So when you stamp it comes out shaded um, for more detail. Um, it's got some lovely sentiments uh, ranging from you can do this to a, just a simple hello. Um, to a friend that makes me smile. I like that one. So there's your stamps and you just pop them onto a block the right size and away you go. We've then got the embossing folders which are there's two different ones. Oh goodness me I can't even open it. Okay so we've got this one which has puts the print at the top and the bottom of your page or you could put half a sheet in and just do one piece and like a smaller card so you pop your paper in and then you pop it through your your embossing machine and die cut machine the same with this one this one kind of reminds me of a cardigan kind of knitted print but it's little tiny leaves and it um, co coordinates with all the forever ferns things we've also got the die set my favourite is that one. It is so pretty when you cut it out. Let me just show you. So this one, as you can see, if the camera will focus properly, there we go. Um, and it just, you can cut it out in any colour you like. You can also shade it with um, a blend, you know, a brush or a sponge or whatever you want. Um, and you can cut it out with anything you like. Um, so yeah, so, and some of these will actually cut out of the DSP designer series paper so I've only got 
I haven't got any full sheets left because I've been using it super 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 for the last week or so I've been making lots of different things with it so we have a fern that's my favorite and then that's on the other side so you've got like you've got like the bigger prints on the one side and then coordinating um print on the other side I haven't used much of this one yet but I will so there's this one and the other side is that and then this one so the other side to that one is like that so you can you can you know you get the idea you can just flip them over you know um there's that one i've got a bigger piece of that one to show you yeah that one that one's pretty too and they come in 12 by 12 and they're a they come in a pack and there's two of each print so you do get quite a lot of paper um, and as you can see I've made a lot of cards and I've still got plenty left and there's more scraps on on the other table so let's move these out of the way so anyway as I said I'm Wu from Wu's Creations um, Wendy <laughs> I have I am just starting my page um, during lockdown I um, my health wasn't great so I needed something to keep me keep me occupied but also make me rest but enjoy what I'm doing so I couldn't read um, so I decided to start making cards and a lovely friend um, Ruth at Artful Stampin you should pop over and have a look at her page as well um, has um, as it has been very encouraging and I've joined and now I've decided that I, you know I make so many cards that I need to share so if you're interested in a catalogue or anything like that like a Stampin' Up! catalogue just let me know and I can post one out to you or if you're local to me I can send uh, I can drop one off for you very happy to do that there's also a Christmas brochure but I've got them on order so I have to wait for them to come um, right let's get shall we get started okay so the first card I'm going to show you is I've already cut my card piece so the card piece I cut um, if you take a normal A4 sheet you can cut it um, lengthways that way so it's full width of the card so what I do is I cut two cards at the same time out of one sheet of A4 but not this way usually I usually do it the other way so it's probably confusing now um, you you score at 14.85 on the A4 sheet um, just... so A4 sheet you score at 14.85 so you would score it this way so I'm a... on, on here pop it in 14.85 I know it's a funny number but A4 is just under 30 centimeters wide so it's not quite you can't read unless you trim off the end and then cut it but we just say 14.85 and it's perfect so then you score it so on the trimmer tool from Stampin' Up you have a scoring tool and you have a, um, a cutting tool so the dark grey is the cutting the light grey is the scoring tool so I've got it round the wrong way, clearly, because that's you know just the way I this is the way I roll. So anyway, put it back where it's supposed to be. So then you'd score it across there, and then when you turn it and pop it back in, you cut it at ten and a half. So you cut it straight down the middle, and this will give you two cards with the um, top fold instead of a side fold. So it gives the card a nice you know a different sort of look straight away. So then what I've done is, this is quite a simple card, but it looks really effective. So I have cut my card. I've cut this piece of um, Forever Fern DSP and I have cut it, as you can see, so that I can have a border all the way around. And this frames, what you have to remember is it frames your card. So it looks pretty. You can have any colour card underneath. Um, 
Stampin' Up do colour card to go with just about every ink colour they do, which is amazing because you can coordinate everything. And to be honest, all the colours seem to just go together and all the stamp sets, you mix them up, you can do what you like with them. So, I shall glue this on to here. Like I say, you could cut this up and then just layer it back on and swap it over and move it around and then now with the glue you have a little it's one of my hairs my hair gets everywhere okay so pop this on here so when you're doing you know when you put it on you think oh man i've got it wonky it, you have got a little bit of wiggle room with the stamping up glue but only a few seconds so i try and get the one edge and the top and the bottom just about right of what I'm doing. I've been doing it a little while so I've got the hang of that now. So then you've got your card back. Then I took, now this is out of my scrap and this is, I don't even know how big it is because it was just a piece of scrap. So this is just over six centimetres by nine and a half. Now you can place this anywhere you like on the card. It could go anyway but the way I was deciding to do it was like this. So I shall glue that on, that's another print. You could be wacky and put print with print, you know. It's all good fun. It's all good fun. So, there we go. So I'm going to glue that. Well, I'm going to eyeball this because... Um, see, you've got a little bit of wiggle room, you can move it a bit, but just be careful because you'll get glue left wherever you've... I think that's pretty even in the middle then what I've got is my cut out now these are a little bit this paper is it's a little bit I don't know whether I've caught it on something so this time now I need to put a sentiment on my heart so we're going to get the stamp set out and we will use and then all we do is just check it will fit on which it will. So get me block. Put me glue away because I don't like it to dry out. Um, I'm going to use Pretty Peacock because these these leaves here and this colour here is Pretty Peacock. So and it's actually my favourite colour at the moment. So everything goes stamped with Pretty Peacock. Um, we've also got Garden Green, Old Olive, and mint macaron i think that one is so you can take your pick whatever color you like really you could even just do black because i mean lots of people stamp in black so okay so you stamp that on oh it's nice and straight that makes a nice change for me okay so then pop this back in here because i am renowned for losing them so i put them away straight away now you can leave it like this if you want to um, but I like to um, just shade the edge so it gives it like a frame so you can either if it was a circle I would just run the edge and roll it gently across my ink pad but because it's a heart I wouldn't be able to get into that bit and then it would look a bit odd I think so what I'm going to do let me just check what colour's been on this one now these these are awesome I think it was a bit big actually let me just get a small one this is um, makeup brushes, um, but they work really well. Oh, that's had pink on it. I don't think, just make sure there's no pink. Um, I usually try and clean these after every, but you just basically just rub them on the paper and it comes off. Um, I won't use that one because that one's got, it is very pink. I think that must be magenta madness. Oh, there we go. We've got a green. Okay. That'll probably be okay because I think that colour is actually in there. So you just rub it on your pad, rub off a little bit, and then just gently stroke the edge of the heart. Um, Stampin' Up do loads of um, punches. Oh look, I've got it all over my finger now. Two seconds. I'll just get that, otherwise it'll be everywhere. Um, they do lots of punches and um, Usually you can get coordinating die sets like the Forever Fern die set that goes with different 
stamps. Um, yeah, so, and I, it, I struggle keeping myself occupied and obviously, um, and the kids do join in a lot actually and Elsie, my daughter, is six and she loves to do stamping. So it's been a bit of a family thing and that's how we've been doing our arts and craft for homeschooling. <laughs> okay, so what I'll do first now is put the heart on and then I'll add the fern. So I'm going to use dimensionals. I have run out of big dimensionals so we're just going to pop some little some little baby ones on if I could put them in the right place there we go not too close to the edge because you'll see it um, if you look at the card at a slight angle you can see the dimensionals so I like to try and keep them a little bit away from the edge okay let me just get all these off I end up with these everywhere but hey ho that's what a hoover was invented for, I'm pretty sure. I have my little handheld hoover. Okay, so this one, heart now, I shall place, let me just put my fern on. So I work out where the fern is going to go. Now I will stick this down in different places because I have made it, I think I've caught it and pulled it in the middle and I don't want it to fall apart. So then I'm going to pop my heart here and then I think that's I'm quite happy with that there so let's glue this down so I'm going to pop a bit there on the stalk and a bit up here there we go doesn't need very much um, when you pop it in the envelope just be careful and the other thing as well is not to use too many dimensionals. I did use too many at the bottom bows because I didn't put one at the point of the heart. But um, because you won't be able to tuck anything in. So, you know, you, I'm happy with the card like that. But you could, like I have here, every time I die cut, every time I use the stamp set, every time I use any of the items I will cut out extras so and this one it's not cut very straight I apologize it was when I was learning how to do it is actually a piece of DSP so I think three no four maybe even five five of the die set will actually cut out the DSP I find it I like to use scraps to do it this is a piece of scrap I had because it wastes a lot of paper if you cut out if you want to cut out a lot of them so um, then I just use different shaded backgrounds um, and this one I've shaded on top of it um, and then I've stamped all sorts of different that, that one's pretty peacock and as you can see pretty peacock is quite dark but because it's a distinctive stamp it's shaded it so it's made it look lighter so it's very, this really nice and that one's um, garden green yeah, garden green. I <laughs> can remember them. Okay, so, but you could add more if you wanted to. So you could add a couple of extra pieces. Like this is the, to match that, that one, you could add them in. And then maybe a little one. But you, you can just build them up as you like. Um, and then I've got another heart. You could put another heart on, but I think... That I don't I don't think the colours really go there so but I'm happy with it like this so there you go that's the first card now for the second card we are going to I will show you how to score it and everything as well so I'm going to show you all of it <laughs> so let me just put my dimensionals away put everything away as I use them and then I won't I won't use them just get the colour off that need a piece of card so right so we are going to actually cut this one <laughs> so 14 point 
8 to 5 and score. And then on the other side is a ten and a half and cut. So you end up with two cards. Okay, so perfect. Whew. Okay, so we'll just keep one for now because we don't need we don't need to make two at the same time. We can do, but we're gonna just do one. So what I'm gonna do this time is show you the the six block so we need to choose some dsp so i think which one do i like which one do i want i actually just use one i haven't used before so is it this one this one so i've not used i've used a little bit of this one but generally all i've done is cut out a shape so what we're going to do first of all is we are going to get the trim around the right way to start with. That would be a really good plan. So what I like to do is, is get, so this needs to be, so because your card is 10 and a half and you want to make a frame for it, you will cut this at 10. So we cut it at 10, move the excess. And then we're going to cut it at 14.3 and a half. So then when you place it onto your card, you have a frame. Just going to, I've got a bone folder on its way but at the moment I use my stamp uh, my block so move that out of the way so the other side of this is this so what we're going to do is um, <clears throat> cut it trim you think by now I'd know what I was doing with the trimmer okay so with the piece for the middle if we want to make it into six pieces what I do is I cut at three turn it around cut it at three so your two outside edges R3 and your middle one is four. Okay, then we're going to emboss the middle one. But before I do that, we need to cut these in half because otherwise the embossing will be upside down on the one. But you can you could just leave it as an upside down, but my little brain can't cope with that. My little brain doesn't like it. So what we're going to do is cut two of these at a time. So we'll cut this one first. So because we're going to be going from the top to the bottom. So you've got 14. The card is 14.8. This piece here is 14.3 and a half. So what I'll do is cut off another half a centimetre. But that's a little bit off each. So you could just do them at six and a half because then it doesn't matter if you've got a gap in the middle because you're going to be putting a strip of card across the middle so we'll do six and a half and then six and a half again on here remembering to keep all of your little bits it doesn't matter how small they are i don't keep the very skinny ones but a piece like that will come in handy you'll be surprised so then we take the other two pieces that are three centimetres wide. If I can pick, I've got no nails at the moment and I can pick anything up. <laughs> right, so move them out of the way. So then this one will be six and a half. Just check they're both together and even. And six and a half again. And you'll end up with six pieces. So 
so we'll just keep those little bits. Okay, so we'll smooth them off the edge because then I can pick them up. Right, so we shouldn't need to do any more trimming. Now then, I think we're going to use this one. So what I'll do now, I will disappear for a second, but I'll be back. So we're going to put our wider pieces into the embossing folder. So I want one to be that way up and the other to be that way up. But trying to get them so that they're in a similar place on the embossing folder. And then I'm just going to grab the embossing folder my big shot. Right, so we've got the embossing folder. We have to take the sheet number two off to make room for the embossing folder. And we'll pop that in there. There we go. Probably wiggling the camera over there. Okay, so that should be embossed now, which I think it is. I'll do that. Let me just move the machine out of the way. Here we go. Okay, technical difficulties. I'm back. Okay, so we have we've embossed them now. So all we've got to do is assemble it. So you'll put the printed in the middle and leaves at the side. And then you'll do printed at the side, leaves in the middle, on the bottom, like so. So we will glue these on. So just checking what the frame part will be like to make sure I get, as long as you get your first piece on tidy, it usually works pretty good. And. So we'll get these on now. So you know, just just like that. Oh, I love these embossed ones. My glue is running out again. Come on, glue. Remember not to press too hard on your <laughs> embossed ones, otherwise you won't have very much embossing left. It'll look a bit flat. So, be gentle. I have an order coming, but if anybody would like to order, just let me know. And I can place an order again. If, if, I, get enough, if I get enough orders, I can do free delivery for you. It'll come to me and then I'll send it to you. And if you live locally, obviously I can drop off. We're going to be running a competition. So when this video goes live, I'm hoping that the same day I do this, I will have the competition ready. And the competition, you will win a set of four cards. Now, you can pick cards I've already made. Or you could ask for four Christmas cards or... Um, any sentiments that you need so if you've got events coming up birthdays whatever just um, and if I've got the stamp sets to coordinate with the sort of card you want I can make them for you um, I can borrow um, some stamp sets as well but just let me know but yeah we'll be running a competition over on my Facebook page you can find me at Woo's Creations online. I have a website. Everything is a little bit sparse at the moment because I'm still learning how to do a blog and all of that. But I absolutely love making cards. Okay, so now we've got this. Um, we've got the basics, the background now. So now we need to build up the front. So we need... A piece to go across the middle. What have we got here? What's that? Ooh, quite like that. Okay, so 
these are. This is another scrap pick thing I can show you actually. If I pull in all the bits. What I did was I got a piece of card, um, white card, and then I had all of these scrap pieces. If you can see, there's lots of different pieces. So these were in here. And there's the other bits. There's that bit. And the last piece is there. So it was one piece of card and then I took my frame lip dies, stitched frame dies, these, and I chose a few different sec um, separate ones and popped them, popped it through my die, die cut and emboss machine and you get little, and then I've just kept them because I just wanted to use up some little scraps because my box was getting a bit full of scraps. So we could use, we could use this one. Or we could even be well <laughs> use this one and you could even put your your sentiment on the background but I wouldn't I would I might just put some white behind it so that I can stamp on the white so let's see if the sentiment from in here will fit in that gap so we've got the you can do this Uh, hmm, it might chop it off. I know. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll just go with a simple. And says it all. Hello. <laughs> like so. And you pop it in the middle. And then you will have a gap either side. But I'll show you what you can do with them. If you if you ever end up with um, you want to do a sentiment, but your piece of your sentiment card is big, you can always fill the gap with. Um, a couple of diamantes or gems from Stampin' Up. They do a, a, a quite a wide range of different ones, even sequins and things as well. You could stamp one of the leaves. So this is what I would probably do today. It was stamp that one on one side, that on another side. Obviously, it's not going to be the whole thing, but it'll give you a little print on the edges. So we need some scrap white. My scrap white paper. I do, you can tell I don't throw anything away. <laughs> so here's a piece of white. So let me just get the. Okay. So I'm just going to trim off the end. Put that scrap. So then you have a little framed thing to go on the card. Let's glue that. No, nope. let's stamp that first, Wendy, because otherwise you'll be... <laughs> right, this time I'm going to use shade. No, I'm not going to use shaded spruce because that's not... We're going to get Old Olive, just for a change. Pick up your stamp. So if you can't see that a second, I need to be able to see it. I'll see it. Now... This line here happens because I've pressed too hard in the stamp and it's gone on the edge. So like I said before, there's never any mistakes. Turn it over and try again. Right, so don't stamp too hard. <laughs> Just check it's not. See, it's very easy. Okay, try again. Now it doesn't matter if it's not completely straight as well with these because you're putting it in, in a frame, but um, I would normally try and make sure it's straight. Just put that away. Okay, so we're going to pop that on top of there and I can straighten it up in there, you see. So let's get some glue on here. Like so, and turn it over and straighten it up. And I've put it on upside down, haven't I? Why on earth would I do that? Does anyone know? <laughs> you see, these things happen. They do, they do, they do. 
Nobody's perfect. Certainly not me. Okay, let's try again. Right, so then you can make sure it's straight without being too cack handed about. There we go. Okay. Right, so I'll probably put some gems on this one. I think. Move that out of the way. Okay, so then you can pop it on. Now the other thing you can do um, is put it on with dimensionals, which then means you can put some extra greenery on, which I think I might do. And this is one of the die cutters in the set as well, and I love it. I have used it numerous times. Usually I use it if there's a circle um to put the sentiment on but actually i think that would look quite cute there and then maybe uh, maybe just that one you know oh, i really need to let my nails grow a little bit so you could put that one on that side maybe I don't know, I'm really fussy when it comes to putting things on. Sometimes I'm a bit too fussy, I think. Oh, that looks cute. So we'll glue this on the other end. And I do have one flower. This is not a Stampin' Up flower. I haven't got, I haven't, um, I'm purchasing things as I go along. So I haven't got a lot of the punches yet. I have a few, which I love. I wonder if they'd look cute because I'm not quite sure what plant this is supposed to be but that might look quite cool on that end and then the leaves on the other end um, here we go right so the other thing I love to do are one sheet wonders now Ruth on Artful Stampin um, stamped one sheet wonders um i've learned them from ruth and she is a bit of a queen of one sheet wonders and i like I, I i quite enjoy doing them now so i will be doing a video with a one sheet wonder for christmas with i'll show you another i'll show you the stamp set in a minute called Snowfront, and i I bought it because it was Christmas but I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do with it and Ruth always says make sure you've got five projects in mind before you purchase a stamp set. Well now I've used it I want to use it to make wrapping paper I want to use it to make everything because I love it but obviously at the time I didn't so I think I might put that flower there yep and what should I put it there? Hmm there okay oh don't use so much glue you don't need a lot of the stamping up glue it's um it's quite it's got plenty now i've done that look and i didn't stick it down first did i like Might... <laughs> seriously you can tell this is the, the video because i don't normally normally i just sit here and the cards just flow and i carry on and make them but once you know you're being filmed these things happen so i'm not going to put dimensionals on it because i've already see too much glue fell off okay so hopefully that will that will dry in a minute have i got anything else in here that we can use no, there's no little flowers left. Must cut some more. Okay, so there you go. So you can, you know, you can use your imagination. You just keep going until you're happy with it. Um, just keep stamping. And then because I've used a green card, you could put um, a white piece of card and maybe stamp a couple of leaves on it so that it matches the outside of your card so that they've got place to write because if you write on there it might be a bit too dark to see it properly but there you go so i hope you enjoyed my video i 
hang on I was going to show you something what was I going to show you oh the stamp set we're going to use for the next video okay this one so you've got snowman and we've got some reindeers and some trees and then you've got mountains and things on here I have made a one sheet wonder already which is this this one and it makes an awesome background um, you can also I'm thinking of making a bag in one of the videos shortly so um, you can make a bag from one sheet of A4 or one sheet of 12 by 12 um, but I'm going to practice and then I will do a video on that as well I also um, have to I um, don't have to make <laughs> that sounds bad doesn't it I'm going to be making um, teachers gifts so I decided that this year I was going to make um, I was going to make some gifts without needing to spend a lot of money so and then it's more personal and I think the kids can help me make them but I will show you how to make them and then I'll get the kids to help me at a later date so right I will add a gem there but there will be gems but I can't put my hands on them right now so um, yeah so I'll show you how to make a box that will take um, Ruth did it over on her video for me um, so that I could have the measurements and things so if you want to see it straight away if you go over to Artful Stampin she's got a video um, Ruth's got a video up already um, then I will do a video and we will make some boxes for teacher gifts um, teaching assistants whomever you need to give them to really um, and it'll just be the ones I'm making will be big enough for three Lindor chocolates um, thank you for joining me um, if you I'm going to try and do at least one video a week um, and I'm going to do a live for the competition winners so you may actually get to see my face um, so I hope you enjoyed the video give us a like and a subscribe if you'd like to see any more videos um, we will be doing a craft try day I don't know what I'm going to call it yet we're going to think of something funky basically I love trying new crafts um, I will be doing cards mostly because it makes me sit down and rest so I don't get too um, poorly so me and my daughter who is six decided that we would try a different craft each week so I thought it would be fun to film it and see how we go how we get on most of them are going to be things that you can find in the house or are things we've already got because we're not going to purchase lots of different items at the moment um, I think the next video that we've got the next craft we're going to try is um, a bauble wreath so that will be fun thank you for joining me lots of love everybody goodbye